Howdy Eureka 7 fans, Striker Zero here, and it's time for my first ever Eureka 7 model review. Today we'll be looking at the LFO model Nirvash Type Zero from, of course, Eureka 7. I will admit, I'm usually a Gundam guy, but I picked this guy out of sheer curiosity, and I'll be honest, he is a rather interesting model. Now, unfortunately, from what I can gather, None of the Yorka 7 models can transform into their vehicle modes. Which I thought was kind of disappointing. I mean, you would think with what's going on, yeah, it could transform. But, oh wow. Uh, according to the box, it's not, it doesn't have a scale nor does it have a grade. So, for all extensive purposes, I'm just going to consider it a high grade for the time being. Because, well, it is of high grade quality. As for height, well... Once I actually get it off its rift board, I can actually do size comparisons because I have two other models here with me. Uh, colors you have white, red, green, black, gray. I might have said gray already. Uh, gold, you know, which I actually did myself. And I think, yeah, that's about it. Stickers, oh, there's too many stickers to even count. There's one here, here. Uh, let's see what else. Um, along the leg right here. Right here. Let's see what else. Um, up here, this red one. Uh, yeah, same ones over here on this side. Let's see, moving up, you have them on the arm right here. And right here, right here, and right here, and the eyes. These red pieces used to be a sticker, but I got tired of them not folding over right, so I just painted that. That gray part was painted. The, this gray part was also painted. And some of the gold was painted, so it's actually got two different shades. The torso is gold, but the knees are like a yellowish gold got gold here gold for the shoulders and that off gold for the elbows and one of his weapons fell off eh, I'll worry about it later on uh, let's see what else um, oh yeah actually they do come with a stand mostly for the rift board and whatnot but still actually it's holding really well it has a locking mechanism right down there and I'll show more of the board right now and um, the stand is also oh, what's the word I'm looking for uh, oh yes you can actually change positions on it sorry major blonde moment yeah I'm allowed to have them I'm blonde naturally so <laughs> seem like so and of course these pieces also you can change them around from between here, here, and here. I guess for weight distribution. So, let's get this off. Ugh. Come on. You're oh, nuts. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Man, yeah, this thing is really on there tonight. Oh, there we go. Come on. Almost there, almost there. That's one. That's another nice thing about this model. There's actually, well, I'll get into that once. Hi. Oh, ah, there we go. Finally, you actually have poly caps at the bottom of the feet that will actually flip up when the rift board is not in use. So there we go. Ugh, and there we go. There we go. And of course, here's the ref board. I actually did do some painting on this one because it was just solid white. And I felt panel lining wasn't going to be enough. Uh, you have red, you have green, and some black. And that's pretty much it for this. Um, nothing spectacular. Um... Articulation is all right. Head is on the ball joint, so of course it'll go up and down. Um, no side to side because it's a. Oh uh, no, it's not a ball joint. It's actually a peg, and a polycap. 
It'll rotate a full 360, like so, which I thought was really nice. Arms will rotate a full 360. Go out that far, rotate below the shoulder. Bend at the elbow at one point. Hands on the ball joint, so of course that will rotate and wiggle. Waist articulation, though, he can rotate a full 360, no problem. Now, it's really with the legs that where this guy shines. You know, forwards, I mean, look at that. Whee! Go backwards a fair bit. I mean, look at that. That's impressive. Go in and out a fair bit because there's nothing obstructing it. Knees a single joint, so that's all you really going to get. The foot, you also get, let's see if I remember this, forward and back pretty far, side to side. And I think, yeah, I'll we'll rotate a full 360, which I was surprised about. Uh, weapons, this guy doesn't really have much. I mean, he's not the spec chew, so he doesn't have a rifle or anything. Instead, these little pieces that were falling off. I, I'm not too sure what they're called. It's been so long since I've watched Eureka 7. I know there's some kind of blade or boomerang. I don't fully remember, so I do apologize. Uh, white, painted a little bit more red on there. And really, they just go into a hand, that slot right there, so, let's see. This is actually my first time I actually put these in, in the hand, so, please bear with me. Uh-huh. Ugh, come on, get your, oh, there we go, not too bad. Let's see, da-da-da. So, yeah, here we go. I don't know, it's kind of weird, but eh, if it works, it works, right? And now for that height comparison, here's one, here's a 1144 scale model, my Cold District Type GM. And as you can see, he barely, I mean, he barely makes it past the legs. So, of course, he's not 1144 in the slightest bit. And then now here's a 1100 model, my strike gun which I actually custom painted being face shift down colors and you can tell yeah the nervosh is actually small is smaller now than the one one hundred so he's somewhere between that uh price wise I paid about twenty bucks for this guy I mean if that doesn't suit you well I'm not here to force you to buy it but if you're curious about it well there you go so this is my review on the high grade Nervosh Type Zero. I am thinking about maybe picking up maybe one of the Terminus models or maybe even the Spectre. I don't, not too sure yet. Let's see what transpires. So once this is Striker Zero signing off.